Okay, so to get started on this project, I'm first going to grab a Sharpie and just block out the areas I want the cliffs and the rocky terrain to be in this diorama. I'll then grab a few blocks of XPF foam. I'll grab my cute little Stormbreaker and begin to cut out the foam. Hmm, the edge is a little rough on this one. I might just uh, stick to my foam cutter. After cutting out the foam in the rough shapes that I'm after, I'll then glue it down onto the base, building up the terrain in a sort of rocky formation. My inspiration for this diorama is this sort of rocky waterfall from the first God of War game. Love how mystical it looks with the rocks covered in moss and the flowing waterfall. I'll continue to build up the blocks of XBR foam, leaving a little overhang where I guess the waterfall will come tumbling over the rocks. Then repeat the process over on the right hand side of the board to create a little rocky outcropping. Then to get a bit of texture on the rocks, I'll grab my Stanley knife and just slice up and sort of give some rough texture onto the rocky cliff side of the build. Now, don't do what I did. That one definitely left a mark, but uh, nothing a little smooch from my little man cut heel. I'll then continue to rough up and texture the rest of the XBF foam. On the left side of the diorama, I want less of a cliffy look and more sort of tumbling rocks and boulders coming down the hill. To receive this look, I will grab some plaster and some grout and then mix that together with a little bit of water. And then I'll pour that into these rock molds that I have. These rock molds are great because it lets you create a whole bunch of really realistic looking rocks that are a lot easier to paint and texture rather than, you know, trying to find some rocks outside that you could glue to the diorama. This rock here will be perfect for having some water flowing over it for the lip of the waterfall. To get these attached to the diorama, I'll whip out my hot glue gun and start attaching the plaster rocks onto the XBF foam. I'll use some of the more larger rocks on the sides of the diorama to simulate sort of like a small rocky cliff there. Then continue over with smaller rocks, I'll build up a natural look to the rock face. Now that the rocks are all glued in place, I'll grab some sculptor mold, some glue, and some fine little stones to fill out the earthy textures on this diorama. To get started, I'll mix up some sculptor mold with some black and brown paints. This will serve as, you know, like the base layer of the diorama and help seal up the XPF foam. I'll then apply a layer of paste across most of the exposed areas of foam. Next, I'll grab some beige grout and this cheap sand that I bought from my local hardware store. I'll mix this into a paste and start applying it onto the flat areas, which will give a sort of dirty and muddy look to the ground, rather than the more smooth appearance of the sculpt mold mix which is underneath. While the earth texture is still wet, I can grab these little stones and pebbles and, and sand and start dropping them into areas where erosion will sort of naturally wash down these smaller rocks from the cliff face. Having a look at some reference images of real waterfalls, I can see that there's usually a lot of stones and boulders right underneath where the waterfall lands. So I made sure to build up a large pile of rocks underneath where I want the waterfall to sit. I'll then just continue building up the rocks in places where I feel like they would naturally sit. After I'm happy with where all the rocks are sitting, I'll then give it a good soaking with watered down PVA glue to really seal and glue down all the rocks and pebbles in place. It's then outside to dry. While we wait for the base to dry outside of that hot Australian sun, we'll get started on the models for Kratos and Thor. After having a look around on Google, this model of Thor from Wicked 3D is just so awesome. And then this model of Kratos, I think, really matches the same energy. Once I have the models all downloaded, I'll jump into Blender just so I can scale them and get them to the right size so they fit on the board. The model of Kratos was dual wielding his Athena blades, but I really wanted to have, you know, one hand he's holding his Leviathan axe and then the other one of the um, Athena blades. I know this isn't really law accurate, it doesn't really, you know, dual wield each one, but uh, you know, it's my model and I can do what I like. So after moving the geometry of the Athena blade, I then added some bones into his hand and manipulated his fingers so they better grip the handle of the Leviathan axe. After that, I merged his hand and the axe into one model and prepared all the rest of the models ready to be 3D printed. Now after all the models are printed, I can get them prepared and ready to be painted. To start the painting process, I'll give all the models a base coat in black and then come down from the top just to give them a nice highlight in white. I'll then get started on these skin tones for Kratos, starting with a nice rosy red and working my way up through more and more pasty white skin for Kratos. I added just a hint of blue to the veins of Kratos just to make them pop. I'm gonna continue on painting the details on Kratos' clothing. To get a nice weathered look to the clothing of Kratos, I'm gonna use some oil washes. To do this, I'll thin down some brown and black paint with some paint thinner. This will create a really fluid wash which will flow down into the cracks and crevices of Kratos' clothing. 
After the wash has dried for a couple hours, I'll come back then with a makeup sponge and start to wipe up all the excess wash. This will remove all the pigment from the raised areas while keeping all the dark grime and the folds and creases where you know dirt would naturally build up as Kratos goes frolicking through the uh, forests of Midgard. I'll then actually use some silly putty and flattening that out and slicing up a few pieces. I'll use that to mask off certain areas on the pants of Kratos. We'll then jump into the airbrush and give that leather tunic a bit of a base coat. I'll then continue on painting some of the details on Kratos' lower section. Then once again, I'll take that oil wash and completely soak the details on Kratos' pants. And after removing that again with some makeup sponges, we have a nicely weathered pants for Kratos. I'll then grab some super glue and start to assemble the legs of Kratos. Then after carefully attaching the ashes of Faye, I'll grab Mimir's round noggin and attach that to Kratos' belt as well. And with that, the legs of Kratos are pretty much done and we can move up to the torso. Then again, very similar process, just going with a fine brush, painting all the little details across his upper torso. And then we'll come back in with that oil wash to create a nice weathered texture across the armor on Kratos' upper body. For that, I moved on to the head of Kratos, painting the details across his beard, his teeth, and you know the tiny little eyes, which were very hard to get the pupils into. Then of course, I can't forget the iconic tattoos that Kratos has across his head and body. So I just built those up with layers of this red paint. After that, it was time to attach his upper body to his legs. Now it's time to move on and start painting Kratos' Leviathan axe. I want to have the tip of the axe be see-through and sort of glowing with the frost power that it usually has. So I printed it out in clear resin. And then using some liquid latex mask, I'll cover the top of the axe. The mask will then dry into a sort of sticky paste that I can then paint over as I normally would. Once the paint is all dry, I can then come back in with some tweezers and actually remove that liquid latex, revealing the clear resin underneath. I'll then grab some translucent blue pigment and then apply that to the tip of the axe. This will sort of give it that blue frost glowing look that I was hoping for. I think the results turned out pretty good. I'll then attach that axe handle to the rest of Kratos and get the Athena blade on there. With that, Kratos' model is done. Now that we've finished with the Kratos model, we can jump back onto the base and get a bit more work done there. I'll come back and finish off painting Thor once the base is pretty much done. To get some natural undertones across all the rocky textures, I'll come in with some different shades of browns and greens and just liberally apply that across all the rocks on the cliffs of the diorama. I'll then come back in with a really watered down black and apply that across all the rocky textures on the diorama. Once the painting is all done, it's time to start with the you know trees and vegetation and undergrowth that will be covering this forest scene of the diorama. I'll start by painting these gnarly trees that I 3D printed. We'll get these temporarily placed in the peaks of the diorama. I can't actually glue these down properly because you know I need to send this to one of you and they will just break off in transit anyway. I'll then grab an assortment of different sized and coloured flock to start adding some vegetation across all the rocky textures of the diorama. In real life, moss tends to build up in the rocky crevasses and waterfalls that are you know, sort of less exposed to the elements. So following this principle, I'll just start to build up some of the greenery in the dark and hidden areas of the waterfall rock face. Next, grabbing my static grass applicator, I'll start to build up some green pastures on the earthy sections of the diorama. The static grass applicator is really great at building up a natural looking bed of grass. It actually uses static electricity to charge up the hairs of grass. So when they stick into the glue, they're in an upright position and gives you know, a really realistic look to the grass. Once the grass is all dry, I'll then use a stocking over the end of a vacuum cleaner just to suck up all the excess grass. Now that the grass is all glued and dried, I'll then go back in with some more greeny textures to build up some more natural looking layers of vegetation. One of the main reasons that I left this right side of the diorama in the raw foam rather than covering it with the sculptor mold is that it makes it a lot easier to stick these little root nodules into the foam rather than the hard sculptor mold. I'll just continue to add these little roots into areas where you know roots would naturally stick out of the earth. 
Now to give a more natural looking appearance to the grassy sections of the diorama, I'll grab these little grass tufts that I have, which are a bit taller in height than the static grass. Filling these down in random spots will give a lot more variation to the beds of grass and make it look a lot more realistic. Venturing outside, I found this cool little root in my backyard. So after trimming it down and giving it a little wash and oil paint, I'll then attach it to the diorama using a few dabs of super glue. I think it gives a really nice variation compared to the smaller roots which are on the right side of the diorama. Next, I'll grab these extra long blades of grass, which I'll be using to create some reeds and other water plants in the you know swampy X section of the diorama. Adding a dab of super glue right into the center of these blades of grass lets me cut them in half and create you know the perfect length for the reeds of grass for this scale of diorama. The bees of superglue that are visible where I've attached the grass to the diorama will all be covered in resin later in the process, so you know that'll all be hidden later. When I was out looking at one of my local homeware shop, I found this really cool, I don't know, rest red flower that I guess is used for flower bouquets, but I thought it could be really cool to add some, you know, color variation to the aquatic plants um, down in the you know swampy section of the diorama. So then again I just super glued those down into little clumps that'll be then covered with the resin later. Next, I felt that the trees, you know, they looked a bit, you know, bare and dead compared to the, you know, vibrant greens of the rest of the diorama. So, so I grabbed this mossy texture and started to attach it to the trees to give it the appearance of, you know, like vines and hanging vegetation growing on the dead trees. I think these vines really helped blend in the sort of dead, stark trees with the, you know, very vibrant textures of grass and moss that are surrounding them in the diorama. I wanted to bring in a bit more of the magical themes from the God of War games. So I printed out these little ruined stones and then glued them into areas in the diorama. I thought it'd be really interesting to have two of the runes straddling each side of the waterfall to sort of make it feel like a mystical and sort of spiritual area. I then printed out these really cool little sticks that have some mushrooms growing on them and painted those. Then once again, just gluing those down into you know, select areas on the diorama. The area I'm referencing from the God of War games had this Nornia chest and a few of these you know, bell seals, so I wanted to include those in the diorama as well. So I just printed off and painted some of those and then got them stuck into the diorama. I didn't really have space for the third bell seal, so in my mind, you know, this, this seal has just been knocked off its little plinth and is now floating in the water. And of course, we can't have the seals without the chest, so I printed that off and got it painted. And then once again, just glued that down into the watery section of the diorama. This will be floating in the water, sort of like it's half submerged in the swamp. And with that, the diorama is ready for the resin pour. So I just mixed up the part A and part B, and then grabbed this dark brown, you know, olive pigment to add to the resin. And then actually added a little bit more green just to give it more of a swampy, sort of dirty look to the water. I can then start carefully pouring that down onto the diorama, making sure we're not too spill it onto you know any of the grass or the chests or any area that I really didn't want it. The ground was a bit uneven so I actually had to pour it in I guess little sections to really make it fill up exactly where I wanted to go. It should auto level eventually but this just made it a little bit faster. I then grabbed a little syringe and sucked up some of the resin into that. This will just then let me, you know, carefully place it up into the river section where the waterfall will flow from. It was going to be pretty much impossible to pour that you know, from the larger bucket without spilling it on all the reeds and grass up there. I could then also use the syringe to give a really wet look underneath and around where the waterfall will be flowing and naturally splash a lot of the water onto those rocks and grass there. And with that, the diorama base is pretty much done. Before we wait for this resin to dry, we'll jump back and finish the paint job on Thor. Again, really similar process to get Thor painted up, just base coating with the airbrush, blocking out the flat colors on the torso and legs of Thor. Once I painted in all the fine details on the chest and legs of Thor, I can then come back in with an oil wash, and then removing that with a makeup brush, will give a really nice weathered look to the armor and body plates of Thor. I'll then continue on painting all the fine details on Thor's weapons and his head. And with those all finished, I can then glue all these separate pieces together. Now 
Now we just have one final step to get the diorama finished, and that's creating the waterfall. To achieve this, I'll first grab this clear adhesive and then start squirting it onto some non-stick baking paper. This creates a really nice clear base for the waterfall, which I can then add on some water effects to. Once the clear adhesive is pretty much dry, I can actually use its own adhesive properties to glue it to the diorama. I'll then come back over with some water effects and a bit of snow powder to give it a nice frothy and churned up look to the waterfall. And with that, the diorama is actually done. So to enter to win this diorama, literally all you have to do is make sure you're subscribed and then go down in the comments and let me know what two characters from different genres or movies or games that I should battle against each other in my next diorama. Big shout out to April who won the diorama in my last video. I'll be shipping that out to her this week. And again, thank you to everyone who commented in the last video. I actually got so many awesome ideas from all your comments. And if you enjoyed the video, it would really help out if you hit that like button. Now on with the reveal. Yeah!